Hello and welcome to season two of Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life. I'm Jared and as always I'm joined by my partner Johanna. Hey Johanna. Hi Jared. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about managing student technology that they like bring into the classroom. Oh well we just talked about student technology. Yeah the school is, gave them. This, the, the ones that they're supposed to have. Yes. Now it's the ones they just have. They just have. And I can't say aren't supposed to have, even though I should be able to. Um, but that's not what you mean anymore because it's uh, the, the kids these days. I think that the tide is changing, but the people who listen to this podcast have to be a part of getting the change to happen. Which is end cell phones. No. That's not going to happen. It's their watches, too. I mean, they're, or whatever. There'll be a new thing, like, tomorrow, and then it'll be something else. But it's the student technology that has them connected to this virtual world. Second life? That was a thing. This is the virtual world world that they're connected to? No, like, they're... Minecraft? No, they're Snapchat. that's, That's the real world. Or the Instagram. The, or the, the what, Instagram. Ever what? The Instagram. Yeah. Or whatever else that they wibble wobble with. All that stuff. The was technology it, they use for that. That's a cake song that, that makes me think of. Oh, yeah. And it's all vanity. They're wobbling and wobbling. Anyway, I'll play it for you later. Okay. Um,. Okay, but they're going to have it in the classroom for now because we can't do my plan of just having like a some sort of neutron bomb. No, that wouldn't work. That would kill the people and leave the technology. We want like an EMP, like like a miniature EMP to go off in the school every morning and just, just destroy anything with an electronic circuit in it. Yes. Well, in full disclosure, I do teach a course on like... I, it's called Fighting the War, How to Manage Screen Addiction. You should probably put that in the show notes. I do you sh- promote yourself in the... In the I don't. <laughs> it's do funny all- because people will email me from my YouTube channel that, and then they'll be, I'll be like, did you know about the podcast? Or the podcast people will be like, well, I do have that on Teacher Pay Teacher. And none of my stuff is connected because I'm not a business person. I'm just trying to put it out, <laughs> put it out there. Well, don't feel guilty about it. Why? I guess I just feel like it's not, the Johanna experience is not (laughs) user-friendly. Nothing is connected. Okay. Okay. Um, So they have the cell phones. They have the cell phones, the smartwatches, the jigama junk. It connects them to the world that is better than your classroom. And... I don't know about that. Yeah, it's hard to compete. With the constant feedback or the want for feedback or the wants to know what's happening, it's, it's like intense because it's not like when we, it's, it's not like you can hit pause. They're worried about missing out. They're worried about not, their digital self is in many ways more important to them than their physical self. And so how do you as a teacher manage that? I say we like isolate them all in Idaho or something and start over with new people where that's not going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a nightmare. I okay. like like students will bring fake phones to put in the teacher like phone caddy so that they can keep their real phone with them. Oh yeah. Yes, kids will go to great lengths. Like they are, you know, and the research is currently ongoing, but. I would argue that for some kids, the addiction is real. Like, it it influences the choices they make in their life and in their day. They would not do some things because of technology and their need to be connected. Yeah, addiction's maybe not ex- exactly right. Well, they... Because it's all, it's all internally produced. Can you be addicted to something that your own brain makes? The same, it causes the same dopamine response. Yeah, but it, 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 there's no withdrawal from your own production? Yes. There, oh, 
there is a technology withdrawal. Mm. The same chemicals that are released when you take away the cigarettes from a person that cause anger happens with certain kids in technology. If they're addicted, if they're not addicted, then they don't care and they'll just put it away. But if you try and tell a student who is addicted to their cell phone to put away their cell phone, their instant response is going to be to lash out with anger and they don't have control over that. It's just a chemical response when you take away something that important. Well, they have, well, they, no one has control because there's no such thing as free will. But given the, we allow the, the illusion of free will, they do have control. It's just really hard. Like the, the skids are greased to being angry, you know, lashing out when you get the, the toy taken away. Yeah, I'm not a researcher on this topic, nor am I a doctor. It's just... But... It's... It's... You, it's say, not, you say go read about it and you'll see that it's, it's like these other things. It's like, yes. It is very interesting to look at the brain scans. Which of, you can do because you're not a doctor. Well, you can, look, you can see the MRI scans of like the kids and it's when they don't have a fully developed prefrontal cortex, technology does something different. No, it, I mean, it. They don't have the ability to self-regulate as well. It does the same thing. It just, well. it just, it's the, the thing that has a chance to stop the bad behavior is not as strong. Okay. I'm just saying we, there's a reason we don't let kids gamble. There's a reason we don't let kids have access to addictive things like alcohol and cigarettes, their ability to, to control, like to purposely be able to control is limited in, until their brain is fully developed. And even then, it can be challenging. But we're off topic. This podcast, there's, there Welcome is help. Welcome to the how, What is Addiction podcast. Yeah. So how do you deal with student technology in your classroom yes yes and we're not going to talk anymore about destroy it we're not going to destroy it just an i'm an old fuddy duddy you gotta have a balance okay so what do you do uh step one is education they don't know what they don't know i don't know if education's ever going to solve anything stop it are you making a joke yes okay Yes, they kids. Step, respond. step one, step one, for this very specific thing, on your podcast for teachers is quote education. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So. Got it. Salt. Really, we don't need anything else. Let's just stop the podcast. Really, we could have every episode of the podcast be how how do you be a good teacher? Education. Yes. So, um, there are great. YouTube videos, there are great articles that can be at the age level that you teach that work very well with your students to explain the dangers um, and the challenges of technology and social media and um, games where the game doesn't stop. Like if the, if the person, so when we were young, right, they had the war on the video games And they thought that the video games caused all this bad stuff. And although there are some bad things that like first person shooters like research found, when the game doesn't play without you, it's not the same thing. It's when the game is continuing, even if you're not there, that is where the trouble can lie. I don't want to get letters from video gamers. Okay, tell me what I'm supposed to be saying. Then, no, no, no. I mean, everything's right. It's just the the things that about first person shooters is very brief, transit, transient, transitory, very short term effects of heightened aggression immediately after playing first person shooters. Oh uh, no, no. But it there's doesn't make research, you go out and want to murder people. There's research about where where people. Uh, struggle to know whether they're in real life or in the video game. Oh, still? that's that's from your one book, and I, I don't believe this this one at all. You actually had a memory when you were driving your car, and you're like, I had to remember that this was the real world. I mean, not exactly, but sure. Okay, I 
we're not we should get out of debating the the like studies that people have put yeah. out but back to your question. I, I get your your broader point which is that social media is a game that just keeps going on whether you're looking at it or not or video games that just keep going on whether you're playing or not like warcraft sure yeah and the rewards the feedback rewards can be a lot stronger in the digital world than in the real world. Well, yeah, that's by design. Right. The real world sucks. It's right. slow and all of your progress is just infinitesimally marginal. Yes. You do anything and you get better at it, but you can never measure how much better you got from any really And the people around you amount of don't constantly point out the positive efforts that you are making in the way that you can How much online. easier would it be to teach people stuff of like when you figure it out and like a, a, like the first step in differentiation like if like a, a, if a light shined on you and then it just went ding. Yes. Or yes. <laughs> You're going to make all sorts of references. I don't know. That's what happens in Call of Duty when you get a level up. Oh, okay. Got it. But it's they're all designed to yeah feed that oh yeah that's that that feels good yep so students the, the the like kids these days don't like being sold stuff they also don't like being controlled and if they have access to learning that explains to them what these programs are designed to do and what the consequences can be they have a different response to you limiting and controlling cell phone use in the classroom. So really you're just you're using these videos or to, articles to present to them your your theory of why you need to control access to social media during class time. No, don't present that that's what you're going to do. Just present the learning. The same is true to present this to administrators. There are interesting studies that... Yeah, but that's why you're doing it. You're just saying don't say why you're doing it? Sure. But for administrators, the research that they're finding, because there are schools that will enact cell phone bans or have enacted cell phone bans and then pulled them away, and then comparing the data of, of those schools with and without technology bans, I mean, it, it can be a seven-day difference like adding seven more days to the calendar. For some students, it can be up to 14 days added to the calendar, like if they're a student who struggles with learning. So you would say up to a fortnight? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you need a John Roderick ding bell. Ding! <laughs> when, on the <laughs> Omnibus podcast, when Ken makes a bad pun. Yes. He has a, he, Roderick has a, has a bell to... We'll have to get him. me back. I have a bell in my classroom. But that, that, that was really good, though. <laughs> it was. It was good. That was good. But yeah, so, in, I mean, instead of, well, why are you taking my cell phones away? Because I know it's good for you. Is, <laughs> is like a tougher road to hoe than it needs to be. Yes. If you teach them, it, even if they don't totally agree, at least if they if they can see why you think that they need to be taken away. Well, and even better, don't constitute this as for them. Because there's some research that's being conducted now. Angela Duckworth made reference to it, and so I've started using this, and it's very effective. At least anecdotally, what I've experienced is have the kids... It's about the kids advising other Mm. students. Not about them making choices for themselves, but it causes them to make changes for themselves because of the advice that they give someone else. So doing this all under the context of like educating your peers or what do you want to see out of the other learners in the room? Another easier road to hoe instead of saying, I'm going to teach you what's good for you. Yeah. And then I'm I'm going to teach you you. what's good for your peers. It'll be much easier for you to see what's good for them than to accept what's good for you. For you to decide what's good for them. Yeah. Like this is about another student, not them, and then it just happens to apply to them. Um, Clever. Same with parents. Back to school night, secondary, sometimes, you know what, 
there are a lot of things that are important to share with a parent but you need the right type of parent to hear the message about social media and the right type of parent to hear the message about online gaming. And then the parent network is powerful. So the parent that is going to the back to school night, secondary, which is very few of them often, that's the parent you need to get this message more than like your syllabus or late work policy. So you're saying you need to to get the influencers? Yes, the parent influencers. The parents that will go on Facebook and ask questions like, is it really appropriate that we give a sixth grader a real cell phone? Or is a flip phone just fine? Is it appropriate for a fifth grader to have Snapchat? Like, Get the parent to do the dirty work for you because they'll want to. They love these children more than anything else. And if you give them the educational tools to kind of put pressure on their friends, they will make changes. But again, it's about influencing the other parents, not about their parenting So get, get to the busybodies who like controlling others. Got it. Yeah, but not like I want to control you and your... I want you... Like... It's all about the other people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. After you've done a little education, let the students have a voice in developing a technology plan or developing a technology contract. Got it. Yes. This can go... I see where this is going. ...a long way. Now, if you teach secondary where technology, cell phone use is a little bit more challenging, you're not going to have to... You can't have a separate contract for every single one of your classes. You're going to take input from all the classes. If you realize that a class forgot something important, you can wiggle that in. And then this is worth your time. Taking a class time to have students go through this process will save you so much time later on. Like an effort and phone calls. And I mean, this really fits into the whole don't work too hard eight hour work day thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because... I see the trick already because you already taught them what's good for everyone else. No one's just going to sit and be like, well, I think our, our technology policy should be, we just play on, on the gram all day. (laughs) Uh, They're going to like use the thing that they've been taught by your little, you know, propaganda videos uh, to, to come up with actual like, smart things to do well and and because ha- they said them yeah. it'll, it'll be a lot easier to have buy-in yes and they um you know you have to ask the right prompting question mm-hmm. you, i mean and i like to make connections to their workplace like what would be an expectation of the person bagging your groceries what would be the expect you know like connect to what would the expectation for the lifeguard be? What would the expectation for someone working in a daycare be? What would, I mean, make connections to that will help them see that they're modeling in the classroom what would be expected anywhere else. Yeah. In the business world. In the business world, only very briefly looking at your phone if the meeting's not super important. So that's a little too hard for, so this this is a great segue into my next point, which is something you might want to consider is having a specific space or square or carpet or something where using your own personal device would be okay. Okay, yeah. Because the hardest part, like just taking it away outright can be very helpful. Meeting the kids outside the classroom and saying like, go put the cell phone in your locker can be really helpful, but teaching them how to balance the want to check the phone. I mean, for 90% of your kids, you want to teach them to restraint. And so giving them a way where like, I do need to do something on my phone. Yeah. Okay. This is where we all go. We know that once we go there, we are only there for less than a minute. Yeah. That's smart allows an option yeah it's like a safety valve plus it you're right like it teaches restraint not just like complete forbearance right and 
have the students have the, a the voice. the real world isn't going to have complete forbearance. Right. Or to have your swift, strict consequences. Right. Really practicing restraint as a skill is really important. Right. Got it. And having the kids come up with not only the expectations for the technology, but also have them come up with a stepping process for the consequences. So what are we as a class going to expect when the it's violated once, twice, and make sure this is not like in a class time, but continuously, like, so that eventually you're getting to, like, the student has to go, and it, your school, you're going to have to figure out your own method, um, but where the cell phone isn't able to come into the classroom, or potentially isn't brought to school, or, and sometimes people are like, well, that's, not fair. They don't have a safe place to put it. Home. Fight the Home's good fight. Home's probably a safe place. Fight the good fight. The, a, technology is not a right. It is not a constitutional right. No, but they act like it's a right. Kids and their parents and even teachers and administrators. The listeners can't see the face I made. I know. But I'm telling you, it's like if you say to a minute, an administrator, so-and-so is not to bring their phone into my classroom anymore. The administrator will look at you and be like, well, you don't have the... Literally, you don't have the right to do that. Why not? Because it's their right. Techno- this technology is only 10 years old. Like, how did it become... It's not a right. It is not a right. Also, just like anything else, if you bring something expensive to school and it gets stolen... It is not my legal obligation to keep your expensive stuff safe. But they will tell you it is your legal obligation to keep their expensive stuff safe. So, like, I don't take kids' technology because then I worry, like, I don't know legally what the truth is, but I worry if I physically take it, then... So what do you do for, like, first and second and third consequences? What do I do? What does one do? I don't know. Um, ideas to give the students are uh, the same technology plan that you use with school-issued technology. So for three days, they can't bring any personal technology into the classroom. You might have students decide that um, those clear, like having a specific spot where all technology goes inside the classroom and like this clear holder, like shoe holder. People Whoa. will see this on Pinterest. Don't make your comments on Pinterest. Um, you can even have like an actual lock box where kids dump their phones um, and watches. If every kid has their own, you, if kids are allowed to carry backpacks, you can just have the rule that technology always stays in the backpack. If kids have a locker in the school where it's just them, you can have the rule it has to go under their locker. Again, if a kid is an idiot enough to share their combination, that's not your problem. I've used the office before. So like as kids struggle, um, they actually turn in their phone to the office and the office puts it in the, the safe and then takes it out. You can... Like, that's kind of it. Like, I, and I'll ask kids as they walk into the room, like, let's say, Jared, you have lost all personal technology in my classroom. Yes. And at the door, I will ask you, where is your phone? In my pocket. Right. It's hard for kids. If you ask them a yes, no question, easier for them to lie. Do you have your phone? No. But where is your phone? A lot harder. A lot harder. Do you think the mic is picking up me writing? I don't think so. I'll cut that part out. Don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the last... Do you feel like... What else do you feel like I'm forgetting before I get to the mistake teachers make? No, I feel it's a little easier on this than I did on the okay, student-issued so technology. But, get, but keep, let's, keep let's just question. finish the thing. And if we, if we get questions about it, we can revisit this subject. I think they'll be surprised once they turn this over to students how proactive the students will be on this is what our plan should be. Yeah, okay. And uh, these are our consequences. And I like, guess that's the part I don't really buy into, but seeing is believing, right? If you explain to them 
how much they lose. Like if there's some great articles about me not using my phone, but Jared using his phone, how much that influences my choices. Another thing you can do is have kids track. Everyone turn their phones on during a class time so that the volume's all the way up and teach a class where all the pings are going off the whole time and then count up the number of pings, like have kids look and see how many notification they got. And you'll easily get over 500 notifications in a classroom of 30 during one 40 minute class. (laughs) But like, there's great activities out there that will cause kids to self-select saying that we don't, phones aren't going to be a part of our learning experience. Okay. Yeah. What's the top mistake then? Top mistake is that the teacher models constant phone use. Oh, yeah. These rules apply to you too. And, right, it, it makes sense, but like, is it really that damaging? Yes. That's not fair. We're all playing the same game. If I'm not allowed to have my cell phone, then you better not be able to have your cell phone. Like, even if I am checking my sc- like, we do the same thing. There's two minutes of free time in class. I'm going to go to my computer and check my work email. That is the same thing that the kids are doing when you're transitioning from one activity to the other and they want to check their Snapchat. Like, that's not fair. And, well, and mean, they won't buy in. Life's to not your, fair. Yeah, but they're not going to buy into your technology plan if you don't follow it too. Defeats buy-in. Yep. It'll, it's a slippery slope. It can be really hard when you have like associates or paraprofessionals in your room. Like everybody has to adhere to the plan. And better yet, not just the teacher has the ability to word? enact the plan. What? Paraprofessional? Yeah. So like. I don't know. I'm going to look up what that literally means. I don't okay. know if I like it. I'd, I prefer associate, but. <laughs> yeah, associate's kind of a beat up word now. because it, it gets true. It gets used in so many different they're, contexts. They're all beat up. I just, from the kid's perspective, I call them teachers. Sure. <laughs> like, they're an adult in the room who has the same privileges as I do. Except, like, I like to run it very similar to, like, The principal is technically in charge of me, but how often is the principal going to come into my classroom and directly tell me what to do? Like, same thing is true for me when I have other adults. They're all bosses. Yep. Just like Cool Hand Luke knows. Everyone's, it's it's the world's full of bosses. All right. Anyway, I know I get a little on my high horse with technology, but I just, I, we gotta, we gotta fight the good fight on this one and come up with parameters for students. And for us, because I go into the, you go into the teacher's lounge and it is like, it's just as bad as going into a a high school. bunch of cigarette smoke and. You go into the high school lunchroom and it's weird now. It's quiet because the kids are all on their phones. Yeah. They don't talk to each other. Well, the same thing's happening in the teacher's lounge. You go into teacher's lounges and it's like weird how I mean, not at every school, not at every location, but it is interesting. Like, they're just cruising the Facebook. Remember the Simpsons episode where Sideshow Bob wanted to destroy television? No. I'm sure I watched it. It's a pretty good one. But man, think how much damage television has done to us. And then just imagine how much more damage is possible from this social media nonsense. Yeah. Like, it's... It's got the possibility of eclipsing television, and television's already ruined us. Anyway, um, let's recap. Let's recap (laughs) on this positive note. The next podcast I have scheduled, by the way, is tons of fun. In summary... These are kind of some downer podcasts. Don't bother really listening to anything else in this podcast, because it's not really worth teaching anything. We're doomed as a society. (laughs) Everyone's brains are just going to turn into ones and zeros and then leak out their ears. Um, it, well, it, it's, I think it's, it's over. I think it's kind of ruining grit a little bit. Well, that's, that's your pet thing. I, I know. I, but I, it, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but to make your teaching world easier, 
why you still can. Yep. We're going to manage the tech that they bring into the classroom by educating them um, on your and why it's a distraction, why it's a danger. Um, yes. So they can, instead of just being this is like, well, I know what's good for you. You're going to show them why it's potentially bad. Yep. Um, but then they're going to use that information and apply it to what other people need because that's easier for everyone always is to think of why other people need rules than why they need rules. Yes. And help let the class have a voice in developing the rules for the, cl- the personal technology in the classroom. Correct. Um, you suggest having an okay zone. Yes, I do. Because it allows restraint instead of complete forbearance. Um, yeah. And that helps. It's a good thing to practice anyway. It helps enforce adherence to the uh, uh, to the rules because people aren't forced to cheat to get something they think they really oh, need in. I thought of something. Oh, yeah, okay. We're, we're not allowed to do recap. that during the recap. Uh, one thing to offer up to your students is whether... Um, people are allowed to take pictures or video during class that's not associated to the learning. So that can be a big one is do we want this to be a safe space where no one is going to take your picture and post it even if you're in the background or record you and post it? Yeah. I'd... No. No. Don't do right? that. But if you don't, don't... Don't really do that ever, please. But you don't have to Don't take pictures have... or video of anyone or anything. But you have to have a conversation. Yeah. Is, you is ha- that you have something to we have want that around? as a part of the education process. And so that's where you can ask. Every behavior issue you see with phones and technology, you need to ask a guiding question of the groups to discuss, like in small groups, to help them formulate and structure and think about this contract, these rules, these expectations. Uh, speaking of asking questions, you, you, when you're enforcing your discipline for someone that maybe has lost the use of or the, the presence of a personal device, mm-hmm. open-ended questions are better than yes-no questions because it's yes. harder to lie. Yes, correct. Do you have your phone? Nope. It's very easy. Where is your phone? Coming up with an affirmative lie of some an answer that's not true. Besides, when when the when the true answer is in my pocket, yes, is a lot harder to come up with than nope. Yep. Um, and then top mistake is you you can't model the the same uh, d- destructive behavior that you're trying to in, to to get rid of by always being on your phone or constantly checking your email and stuff. Yes. Put it away. Put it away. If it's important, someone can call you. Yeah, what a concept. Or you could go to the OK zone, I suppose. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's nothing wrong with telling your class, I've got a kiddo who's kind of sick, or this is a school calling, I need to answer it, and to go. I mean, that's modeling what you want your kids to do, right? If your kids, if your students are having something in their personal life, you want them to model going to the boss and saying, hey, today is going to be a day where I do need, just need to check in on my phone a couple of times. Yeah. I just want to give you a heads up. Like, that's that's what an 18-year-old should know how to do. That's what a 14-year-old should know how to do or learn to do. All right. Okay. In summary, destroy all technology except for podcasts. <laughs> Thank you, Johanna. Oh, by the way. What? Podcasts or listening to things seems to be fine. I looked for research that said like audiobooks were bad or like podcasts are bad or listening to news was bad. Um, well, listening to news, I found some stuff. But uh, listening doesn't seem to be an issue. So listen away. Yeah, listen to podcasts. See, we yeah. solved it. That's or, what you should do. Or audiobooks. Yeah. Okay. We don't have an audiobook though. We don't. So listen to podcasts. Listen to this podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. Thanks, Jared.
John, do you get questions from listeners ever? Yes, we do. How do those listeners send you questions? They send us an email. Where does that email go? Teachertalk for teachers at gmail.com. But wait, what kind of four? How do I do four? All of the fours. They can do a number four. They can write the word F-O-R or they can do F-O-U-R, even though that one doesn't quite make sense. Well, perfect. Teacher talk for teachers at gmail.com. Yes. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Jared. Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life.